All right, today we're going to pick up and talk a little bit more about the periodic table. In previous sections, we've been using the periodic table. This is going to be the first time that we talk about the parts of the periodic table. The, what we're going to do is label a periodic table with all the parts and the sections so that we understand what they are. Now, in one of the previous sections, I suggested to you that you get a couple of copies of the periodic table. This one, I would find a copy of the periodic table so you can write on it. Here's what we're basically going to do. We're going to end up having a periodic table that is labeled with all the different parts. So let me walk through them and explain to you the parts of the periodic table so that you will know them and uh, be good at their names. The first thing you want to do is take your periodic table and darken this there that you will see on your periodic table. And if I get too far ahead of you, you may want to pause and do that first. But that stair step is very important, and we'll talk about that in a minute. I'm going to start on the left-hand side. Column number one on the periodic table are called the alkali, A-L-K, A-L-I metals. goes all the way from the top to the bottom of the column, alkali metals. Column number two are called the alkaline earth metals. Alkaline earth metals. So column number one has a specific name called the alkaline metals. The next one's called the alkaline earth. The middle of the periodic table from here all the way to the stair step. So we're going to go all the way to the stairs in both sections. These are called the transition metals. Transition metals. You'll notice the columns are way shorter than these other two. They're very tall. These are called transition metals. And if you look very carefully, we're going to look at the bottom two rows. You look very carefully when you look at your numbers on your periodic table 37, 38, 39, 40, they're all in numerical order 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 72. There's a skip. Well, 57, 58. 58 through 71 should sit in this space right here in the middle, but they're pulled out and brought to the bottom. The same thing happens here in the periodic table. So 90 through 103 should sit right there. These are what are called the inner transition metals. You'll notice that every time I'm using the word metals, these are all metals in the world. As scientists have found them throughout time, they fit into the transition metals. That makes it really easy to understand the word inner transition metals. Okay, so we have the transition metals in the middle. There's a lot of those. The inner transition metals would fit inside. But rather than cutting the chart and pushing it further out, they just put them on the bottom as a reference. Now, we're going to talk about this staircase for a second. You'll notice that it separates one group from these groups over here. Well, these are called the metalloids, M-E-T-A-L-L-O-I-S. What is a metalloid? Well, it is a metal and a non-metal. acts like both. Anything that touches this staircase all the way down touches it with a side. So PO and AT and SB and TE and GE and AS and AL and SI and B, they're all metalloids. They act like metals and they also act a little bit like non-metals. So metals conduct a charge, just like you have wires that conduct electricity. All of these metals in here, some do better than others, but they all conduct a charge. Well, so do these metalloids, but they also act like non-metals a little bit. Things that don't conduct or don't hold heat very good. That's why, for example, you can have a pot or a pan made out of aluminum, and uh, when you cook in it, pull it out of the oven in a couple of minutes, you can pick it up. It's not very hot. If you did that with something made of iron, it would be hot for many, many minutes, maybe even hours before it cooled off. So metalloids on that line, they act like both metals and non-metals. Now I'm going to jump way over here to the right and then work my way in. This last column are called the noble 
gases. Noble gases. You can tell from the word, we didn't say metals this time. These are all gases all the way down. Right inside that column, fluorine through astatine, AT, are called the halogens. H-A-L-O-G-E-N-S. Halogens. Halogens. And uh, after that, there's not a whole lot of other labeling. Sometimes you'll hear it called the oxygen group. This one doesn't have a special name. The nitrogen group, it doesn't have a special name. Now let me say this, oxygen group goes all the way down to the staircase. Nitrogen group goes down toward the staircase. And then the carbon group. Um, but I will bring out this word that happens to be on my chart that says non-metals. Everything to the right of the staircase are not metals. Everything to the left, all these words over here said metals. These are the parts of the table. They don't ask a lot of questions about these words, but sometimes in the question, they will use the word transition metal or alkali metal, and if you don't know what that is, it makes it really difficult to understand. So these are the parts of the periodic table. We'll reference them in our next session as well.